All right, no reason to dick around over a few seconds. Hello again. We're back for more of this erosion stuff. Let's see if we can uh, find these bloody bugs. So, um, quick recap. When, uh, ooh, I'll recap on the correct machine. Hey, Darius, good to see you. Hi to everyone else. Fan laser, Shin, Arad. No palm to pip yet. Am I coming through audio, video, okay? Is it all that all right? Does someone give me the, the heads up? And then I'll carry on. Uh, <laughs> nice. Did you up the saturation on the camera? No, that's just how Microsoft is deciding I look today. So I, I am, as you say, a tomato. So, um... Thanks, Darius, for the AV and Barrett for the uh, for the same. Right, let's go through. So what we had last time, we had a terrain and we had water running downhill and we tried to get some sediment stuff in. And it all looks like it's kind of running for a few seconds and then out of nowhere we get, well, out of a, a couple of places, we'll end up getting a big old diamond of doom spread out across this guy. Um, there we go. That's what we're looking for. And um, eats the world. So we have got, um, when we pull the textures that hold this data, um, we see not a number all over the place. So we've decided we've got a fuck up somewhere and then that's propagating outwards. Um, so I wanted to check where that happened because I need, basically I need to know what stage is happening in. Is it happening in this first part or in the second one? So I've done a really simple check where, um, I just pull the texture, the uh, height water sediment one, and loop through it at some kind of resolution and just check for not a number in the vector components. And then, um, yeah, if if there is a not a number in there, we throw an exception and we have a look at some of the details. So if I go and turn that on, it'll fire immediately. Because I need to reset and then say continue. And now this is going to start running. Then we just wait a second and um, and we'll get somewhere. So we just want to know which one of these is fucking up and if there's any other significant data. Now I was playing with this just before the stream, so I have some other clues as well. Yeah, we'll see when it decides to throw an error. Good TV. How's your week's all been? Unless there's a bug that avoids debug. Yes, it, it was a bit of a bastard, but I've, um, like I say, I, I was messing around with it a little bit recently. I've, I've started getting back into coding again. I've had this, had this lull, um, which has been kind of handy because it's been a consume phase. So it's been time to actually play some games again and watch some movies and read some papers, which has been nice. So I've been binging on kind of some of the data oriented design and finally got around to reading that what every programmer should know about memory article which is really really good i haven't finished it yet but it's fucking great um it's been on my list for way too long darius has been busy moving and building kitchens good man um hey van's been building stuff head feeding lol for the win indeed yeah ah oh, good to hear you've got a good week too all right come on program Just need one little crash. It'll do it soon. I mean, we might be able to force it by upping the water supply, but I just want it to do what it was doing last week. And then we're gonna start messing around a bit more with it. Um, so I also, there we go. That's what we're looking for. So it broke in with ID one. So that was this ID here is one, which is this stage. I've run this enough times and with a higher resolution. So I know it's definitely this stage. This is very consistent. So blit erosion one is the one where we're having the problem. That's where we're going to look. But having to wait for this long, you can actually see the uh, the hole there in the terrain caused by the non number. Having to wait this long for the issue to show up really sucks. So we needed a way of getting it more quickly. And that's what I've been messing around, just experimenting to see what will really throw it off. 
And one thing I found that does it very consistently is so if I do this, if I just do reset to show that this will work, then I say continue, then we're back to the beginning, it's all going to start again. If I go into this other file, I've moved some stuff over here. This is the function that resets the terrain. So we call Perl in noise, we multiply it by 40, that gives us our hills. If we set this starting height to zero, and then reset, we get the error immediately. Right? In fact, it, it crashed so fast, we, haven't, we can't even see the, uh, the change yet. I'm not sure if we can even get, no, we can't get it to. Yeah, if we keep saying continue, it's gonna go to zero. But um, yeah, so here we go. We can see the flat terrain now. So when the terrain is completely flat, it crashes immediately. So it's something to do with differences in height and that's gonna give us a zero. We know we're doing lots of math with differences in height, so it's gonna be something to do with this. So this is where we're gonna start, the flat terrain and try and see what we screwed up. Um, so we can now take these checks out for a second. Can we? Nah, leave them because it'll be a while before this works again anyway. Um, we're gonna to go to erosion one, which is this pipeline and it's erosion step one. Here we are, okay. So in here somewhere is our problem. And we know it screws up all of the components. And what else? So we are modifying the height here. We've got water minus evaporation, new sediment. I don't think we're using sediment for anything properly yet. But let's... Um, let's do something really simple. Let's just do a pass through shader. So where do we unpack? So we've got terrain height, water height, and current sediment. These three. And again, I, this way, I really don't know. I don't know what I'm doing in this because this, um, I think we just don't know where this error is. So we're just gonna keep on messing around until we find more clues. If any of you have ideas, please yell it out. Um, but until then, we'll just dick around. Whoops, terrain, height. Water height and current sediment, and we'll do this. Symbol apply is undefined. <laughs> what? Um, what did I screw up here? Oh, oh, damn! I've um, uncommented that for some reason. All right. Yep. So let's. Get the feeling I just screwed up some parens there. One second. Let's, uh, I want to wind back and see what I just did, because that is making me uneasy. Oh no, I had actually screwed this up before we started. Terrain height, water height, um, current sediment. Those are the ones we had. Terrain height, water height, current sediment. Okay. Good start. Um, there we go. Let's get the ripple up again. Reset the terrain and play. And now nothing's breaking. So, surprise, surprise, it's in one of those things. Um, if we just go, let's say new terrain height. Whoops. Oh, you idiot. I'm changing the wrong thing. Um, where are we? Here we go. Oh, I'm not meant to be applying thermal erosion yet. That's one of the things I'm not meant to be doing. Oh, I don't say actually this is a false positive. I really hope that's not. Hmm, one second. We will see. The My Little Prover book arrived yesterday. I have not seen that. I'm gonna have a Google of that right now because that sounds cool. Um, not in Windows Explorer, no. The Little Prover MIT. Oh, I see, like the little schema. 
or the reason schema and stuff like this. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I'll have to check that book out. That sounds great. Um, fan laser. So it's something to do with heights, but with height differences. Not what I thought last time. I think so. Unless, unless my hypothesis is completely fucked by the fact that I had this still left in there. I really hope not. Um, reset. New terrain height. Oh, what is it? One second. Let's see what we were using before. Water minus evaporation. And new sediment? Yeah. Okay, cool, right. So we're still getting that error even with this bit commented out. That's good to know. Because um, I don't want to mess around with thermal erosion just yet. Okay, so current sediment, water height, terrain height, REPL, reset, continue. Okay, so that bit doesn't crash. New terrain height. We do that and it crashes, okay. And we can see that it's only the, at this point, it's only new terrain height that's got not a number. So that's good. So we know this is definitely what's getting corrupted. And Oh, I'm starting to feel like a crazy person now. When did I... Um... I'm getting a bit happy on that uh, undo button and not being very careful. Okay, right. Still got the right issue. Water is incredibly low, which makes sense. There's not much of it here. Zero, 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 essentially. And then not a number. Okay. So let's look at new terrain height. What is that getting changed by? It's getting changed by a road sediment. That's where that's defined, in fact. So this a road sediment function looks like what's screwing us up, potentially. Um, what we could do, seeing as we're not using the sediment straight away, Let's have a look. Let's, if, if in the first stage we're not using the sediment properly yet, let's, um, then we can just use that as a temporary... We, we just need to see some of the values inside this shader and it's just really annoying to add a load of extra outputs just for that. Um, let's have a look. Thermal step zero, no, okay. Um, ZZZ, it's going to be around here somewhere. There we go, sediment and that. Okay, sediment around is unchanged in the first stage. So that is perfect. Um, Z data, current sediment. And it's just used there. Ah, oh, this is ideal. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to look at the values coming out of this. Currently we know that new terrain height is buggered. And it could be done by something in this function or it could be one of these arguments that's being passed in. So we could see from the, we still got the error? No, let's, let's reset and um, run again. And move this over here. We can see that the, we return, okay, there's the third value we return in here is zero. So that means this was legitimate. So let's look at terrain height and make sure that was also, um, no, we know that was correct because when we changed new terrain height to terrain height, nothing went wrong. Let's try new water height and see if that was broken. And we will do that by going back to here. We will reset and we'll say continue. And it broke and yes, it's not a number. It's the new water height. Okay, what calculates the new water height? Oh, this, oh, okay, yeah. Um, we actually, ah, uh, we redefine it. That sucks. Okay, so this is this value being returned, which is one of the three being returned by this function. That's kind of annoying that we reuse that variable. Let's just put two after it for now. 
Um, oh, newer water height. Ugh. And we don't do anything with that value either. That's got to be wrong. Okay, anyway. Reset, continue, it crashes, and this value is not, not a number. So, this was valid when it was passed in. Time delta, ugh, man, if that's wrong, I'll eat my own face. Please be correct. I don't want to eat my own face. Yep, that's good. That's 0.01, as it should be. <sighs> face saved. And C, reset, continue, is not a number. Okay, so we found another candidate. This being passed into a road sediment is the problem. So now we're at calc C. There's a few parts here. Um, it could be velocity, oh, it could be any of these. We know it's not water height, we've checked that already. Um, Let's have a look what's going on over here as well. Git is my friend. Git is one of my greatest friends. I fucking love Git. Especially, uh, like, having worked a few and some people that use it well, teaching me how to use it better has been really nice. Rebase is, mmm, so nice. Um, Oh, nice. Shin's bought a new graphics card. That will be cool. More um, more options for your uh, engine as well, which would be nice. I must admit, though, I, when I use Git, I'm only using Magit. Like, all the time. I never use the command line stuff. Just the integration in Emacs is just so amazingly good. Um, GDX 1050 Ti. That's pretty nice. It's good stuff. Not not a number. Yeah, I should just say it's a number, shouldn't I? Um, oh, hey! Uh, CSE Mark. How should I say that? Sesmark? No. Mark. <laughs> um, if you want to say phonetically how I should say your name, please do below. Uh, this is my first watch here. What flavor of Lisp is being used? I'm using Common Lisp um, and some libraries for making GL nice. So the code that we're writing here is actually... Um, running on the GPU. If you see, sorry if I'm telling you stuff you already know, but um, normally you write defun for defining a function. If you see defun g, I'm writing a GPU function. This is going to get translated into GLSL, and then these GPU functions can call each other or can be composed into a pipeline with def pipeline. Um, this is how we make code that's going to run on the GPU, and then we map over it. But at the moment, I'm afraid this is going to be a bit of a weird episode to jump into just because we're looking for a very specific bug because it's like part four. But it's really cool to have you here. So thanks for stopping by. Grubby Juice, hello. Oh, you're a programmer with a, a game programmer. Nice, man. Um, City State Entertainment, Mark. I will need to look up. Well, Mark, I'll need to look up your stuff. Because... Now I have someone to ask questions about. Hey, cool. I must not get completely distracted by your projects right now. But this looks nice. I'll check that out more later. Um, yes, yeah, so the... Um, yeah, basically there's a lot of macro magic that allows us to write code that's going to run on the GPU alongside our normal CPU code. Um, Grubby Juice, I know nothing about Lisp, but it's still fun to watch regardless. Really nice to have you, man. More of that. What's your, uh, what languages are you into then? Like, what do you, what do you do your game making and stuff in, or Grubby Juice, or whatever you do, what are you working normally? Oh, that's, I've got a coffee machine this week, and it's, it is good. Life is good. Right, okay, so, we know C is buggered, um... And we know calc C is a likely candidate, but we want to know if that's definitely the thing that's breaking it. So let's start with the normal. Okay, well, let's do normal. 
Oh, of course. <sighs> yeah. Um, we want to know if that normal contains not a number. So what we could do, actually, is if we just add the components, if any of them are not a number, it'll corrupt the rest of them. So, uh... That'll work, maybe? Right, reset, um, SLDB, say continue. That wasn't the problem. Okay, so the normal is fine. The velocity 2D? Oh, let's do velocity 3D first because we are, again, We've already got a set up for a three component vector here. So let's do that. That is not a number. Okay. Well, fuck. <laughs> okay, so we've got a new candidate. Whatever is creating this velocity 3D. God damn it. Why is that the, the thing that's broken? That's me. That's my fault. Fuck. Um, I will check velocity 2D because velocity 3D is constructed from that. But this is making it would make sense that this is related. Um, okay, velocity 2D. Uh, reset and continue. And that is fine. <sighs> Righto. So it is how I made that 3D vector that's uh, stupid. Let's have a look. Convincingly distract myself over here. C plus C sharp Scala assembly, and I need to, I need to do some Scala, and I really want to get into learning some um, x86 assembly. That would be great. Um, Chimera is showing off some uh, updates to hit the engine trial that he's working on, which is cool. Um, I was just saying I'm a newbie, but. Um, More of a knowledge-based person when it comes to programming. And then he's deprecating himself. Sure you're, sure you're great, man. It's no problem. Yeah, just keep programming. I feel like I'm a really slow learner. So um, it really depends on the day. Spent six months playing with languages, mainly syntax and concepts, more than uh, con concepts rather than learning the language to... Uh, be used to make something useful. Yeah, that's actually a delightful place to be in. When you don't need to do like a serious interact with humans project, like learning Haskell is way more fun knowing that I don't need to make anything in a hurry. Uh, just because like I can I can play with something that's just pure and entertaining rather than needs to interface with humans as much. But there's flip sides to that. Sometimes it's more motivating to have something real. Um, Yeah, so many choices. Um, X86 is an awful choice. Yeah, it's an awful, it might be an awful choice, but it's actually just useful. Like, um, maybe not... Um, I want to do the X86 64-bit version. It's just like decompiling stuff on... Yeah, I could start off on MIPS and 6502, but that like I have no interest in that architecture. And it doesn't help me at all. Like, I mean, yeah, it'd be interesting to learn, but I would, when I do decompiling, sorry, disassembling um, functions in Common Lisp, I want to be able to read that assembly and just having a bit of knowledge there would help a lot. And with uh, some of the more low level papers. Um, is like x64, okay, so when you're talking about the assembly for x86 64 bit, it's just x64. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Um, sure, it's useful, but don't start with it. Well, I will. Uh, <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to learn this the hard way. Um, yeah, and I, I want to mess with some SSC stuff as well. That'd be cool. Yeah, I, I'm not going to be doing it IA64. I, I do mean the AMD64 stuff. As you can tell, I've 
barely started. I've only looked at tiny bits to just like, um, yeah, to get my toes wet. But I'm having enough trouble with this lovely high level stuff, so I'm, I'm screwed on that side. Okay, so we know that the way I'm making the 3D velocity here is wrong. But we get to see which part of it's wrong now. Um, so we know that velocity 3D is bucket. Let's uh, change this back to this. You know, that got us. Then not a number. Let's check 3D temp because it could be this normalizing and multiplying by length here. Because technically, and this is something I never liked from the paper, was that the velocity 2D could be a zero vector. And it was very likely to be a zero vector when the terrain's completely flat because there's no there's no flow. So normalizing a zero vector is going to be undefined. I'm pretty sure. Or, or, or it's going to have to pick something else which we don't want. So I'm confident we're around the problem at least. Let's see. Okay, yeah, that's, um, let's just do that again, see if we get... It crashes hard and it's not a number here. And it is a number here, so it's going to be this normalize. Um, let's have a look. SysV API doc is a reasonable starter. Interesting. Big fan of niche languages, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. It's cool. It's nice to just see what people are thinking about and get annoyed with. And like, what annoys someone enough to make a language for it? Randy Hyde series using HLA as gentle intro. Man, I'm going to be going through this chat log after this and just taking all these links. Um, Shimera has done a great job of... Um, he's um, basically recording all the logs. So you'll be able to go to Shurikumo. I'm sure he'll be able to put a link here. Uh, and see all the logs for the the kind of last, but at least for the last two weeks, I think we've got, and we'll keep this going. Um, yeah, thanks guys, this is awesome. Thanks, Shen. I will, I will check. Oh yeah, the easy six five zero two. I mean, I run into six five zero two stuff obviously a lot because again, a lot of demo scene guys at work, so a lot of writing on, you know, C sixty four and um, Game Boy, SNES, all that kind of stuff, and they have various. Various chipsets in those various families. Um, I can't say I'm drawn towards Go, but uh, Rust is very, very interesting. Um, thanks for thanks for linking that too. Okay. Oh, I love it. Right. Change liquid. So let's just see. I'm pretty sure it's going to be normalize as 3D temp. Let's just uh, stick this in the thing here. Temp X is that. Oops. Yep, that's the non number. And let's just see length. Length of a zero vector should be fine. Can't see any problem with that. Like, um... oh yeah, this is now a float, so we don't need this. Yep, that's a number, so that's cool. So it's just that normalizer. And does that mean we can just get away with an if? So if we do um, what is this? V two len A 
if v2 then 0 is greater than 0 then otherwise it's just 0 10 is down here velocity 3d of course same problem again Just a little bit more in case. Have I just left this one from? Yeah. Okay. And now it's not crashed as fast. Okay. And the water is slowly piling up. And so far, no explosions. Cool. Okay, well, there's been more painful debugging sessions, that's for sure. Um, let's just see what that was. Down in here, where are we? Water minus evaporation, new sediment, yes. Okay, so this is the... All right. I'll uh, up the water a bit and um, give that a few seconds to sit, and then we'll um, then we might claim that that's behaving. <laughs> Flat terrain erosion. Yep. So now hopefully uh the motor sixty eight thousand. Cool. There's so many I, I wish I was more interested in coding for old machines. Like I even the C sixty four, which I have a lot of love for and I really enjoy watching the demos of, doesn't Yeah, doesn't do it for me. Right. Okay. Well, that's not exploding yet. Let's set this back to, yeah, to semi-interesting terrain. And then we'll let the water do its thing. And And what I'll do for now is I'll take these checks out because that'll help it run faster and uh, yeah. <laughs> See the way the water's behaving though is really like looking at this, I'm pretty sure we've got a lot of stuff wrong with our sediment here. We're gonna have to just go through a load of our code and see. Ah, oh, see we're starting to get these horrible spikes everywhere now. This is really fucked up. Um, I don't remember it being this screwed up before, so we'll just have to see. Yeah, man, that's weird. Let's just reintroduce these and see if it finds anything. No, we've got no spots of not a number yet. That's all right then. Steve Losh was here two sessions ago and has a nice chip, em, em, chip 8 emulator done in CL. Yeah, Steve's cool. His uh, talk at ELS was nice as well. Like gameplay things. There was the old 6502 um, emulator done in CL as well. I can't remember who did that.
Right. Oh, Shin, you didn't like uh, a lot of the ELS stuff then. Oh, that was right. I guess a lot of it for me is, well, it's just seeing folks, but... Um... Yeah, I'm really hoping to see more update on the... Um... Oh, on uh, Marco's project. In, I think it was 2016 he was talking about his um, distributed computing with CL stuff, the uh, supercomputer things. I'd love to see an update on that, but uh, maybe next year. Oh man, this terrain is so buggered. Right, okay. Oh well. We've got something going on. Let's uh, let's start with that and see what we can clean up. I'm feeling kind of... Um... Shin, did I talk with him? Yeah, I mean, I, I, can't, I just can't remember. I don't think we went into too much detail on what's been going on on that project since the last year. Like, mainly it was when people were hanging out, so. Okay, let's put that aside and have I got the paper up? Yes, here we go. Okay, so I guess we just go through. Yeah, there were a couple of things that are really funky in this actually, and we're gonna actually have to go, to have to look at it. So, I'm getting confused. Right, start at the top and just work through. And let's turn this brain down. Oh, it is turned down. It's just this weird, anyway. Okay, so we have some constants. We have a function for adding rain. Where is this used? Down here. And all this stuff up here, we're calculating all the UVs and extracting data and stuff. We'll factor these out into their own functions in due course, but like, and remove this so we don't have the duplication between everything. But for now, it's just, I just, I just want to get something done and working. Um, so we call the rain function, and at the moment this is just a constant, so it's providing 0.1 rain every tick, uh, or rather 0.1 rain a second, um, because when we go to add rain, it's going to multiply that by the delta time and some scaling factor, which is odd, but that's what they have, so I just copied their scaling factor, um, and add it to the current water height. And so this gives us water plus rain. Um, we then, da, 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 da. we have flux to offset. This is the amount of fluid going from where we are into one of our neighbors. So this is flux going to the left, to the right, to the top and to the bottom. And we're taking the data at the left, which is things like the height and the water and the flux, height and water and sediment in suspension there and these other values which are current flux and time delta and things like that and most of this i'm fairly happy with so um we cap it here we use max so we are never getting a minus flux because all our flux is all about calculating how much liquid goes out of our cell and then we're going to we're going to do this for all the cells and then in the next stage we take the water going out of ours and the water going out of our neighbors and we sum that to work at how much is flowing into us um Keppel audio restore would be nice i'm confused um the raining scale sound fishy yeah it does it's just what was in the paper so um and it's a constant again so it's Shouldn't be, shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> Shmero, I mean, right now you have automatic spike trap generation to ship it. Yeah, why am I complaining? Um, got reduced C++ hacks uh, the languages I plan to stick and create with the projects that I really want to make. Um, which Lisp is best for making games, mainly 2D? Oh, there's a, there's a can of worms. I mean, 
I guess it really if it's if, if you want this is okay this is the pinata thing if you want to make 2d games pick pick a 2d game engine and it then like and just find whatever the most complete one is for the language that you're interested in but most of the game related stuff I've seen in lisps has been work in progress tooling occasionally engines um, yeah I don't know who's got the best stuff on the CL side some of the SICP lectures really need audio fix around the 384B but yeah that's uh, that's true yeah well, like Shimura says we're biased here like it's uh, a good few of us uh, common list people Robbie Juice, well, I've used uh, Unity Game Maker and so on. I've never really liked it all. Well, I can't blame you, but it's, uh, yes. Then it's really, hmm. I mean, from the practicality side of things, and again, bias is withstanding. Uh, Common Lisp is really pragmatic. You can reach through the abstractions very well. You can get it to do things that are, again, like you're allowed to mutate things. And that's very, and like just... The FFI is really good. The macros are excellent. There's, again, there's a small little community around it. It's, it is cool. So I, again, I would still say CL, but a uh, type, typed racket is very interesting just in general as a language. I don't know what their game scene is like, but it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, the tooling, the content pipeline is the thing that's still just such a bummer for on the um, Lisp side, and that's a really painful thing to work on. Yeah, well, if you like Common Lisp, I recommend, well, obviously, recommend doing more of it. It's cool. Right, I'm going to focus on this function and we'll get through this. Let's work through here. So, we have some offset. We look up the terrain height there and the water height there. We have a virtual pipe area which is constant and it's currently not telling me what it is because I need to enable concurrent things like every single week. Enable concurrent hints and it's 20. Okay, so we take the time delta, multiply it by the virtual pipe area. We multiply all that by this value. So offset flux. Oh, interesting. Offset flux is oh yeah the previous flux so we're adding that's that's kind of interesting it's interesting that we add no that, that's what i guess that's what the paper says so can't complain about that when we calculate the flux to a given cell where is it Um, flux to the left at the next time step yeah it includes the current flux going in that direction yep okay so that's fine well jump page again no so that's correct I just start doubting everything at this point gravity which is now positive because it's the magnitude not the velocity so it doesn't have a direction um, multiply by gravity the height difference because it's just nicer in my head i'm doing the height of the neighbor minus r height which means that if it's the height of the neighbor is like five and r height is 10 then it's going to be five minus 10 uh, which is going to be minus five i like the height difference to somewhere being negative if it's going down so that's uh that's why the answer here would be negative but then we negate that down here when we're using it because we do want it to be positive because we're calculating the amount of fluid flowing out of us and that's going to be a positive number um and then we divide so this is all multiplied together which is fine and then we get multiply sorry divide by the virtual pipe length which is one so no problems there this looks fine to me in fact i think a lot of the first stage is just fine um we're gonna have to look at actually yeah it's, we've got a lot of sediment fucking up stuff so We'll, we'll get to that soon right flux to offset flux to offsets we create a new flux with all those values we have the local water volume 
which is the water height multiplied by the pipe length in the two directions, which is one. So it's just a pipe length. Um, do we use this? Yeah, we do, down here. We do the thermal step. Um, what do we use? We don't do anything with sediment removed and sediment flux zero and one. We output them, but we're not using them yet in the next stage. We're not doing anything visual with those numbers yet. So I'm 90% sure we're not doing anything visible with those numbers yet. Okay, so uh, what is it? Sediment map zero or something like this. No, what is it? Um, thermal. Thermal map zero, there we go. We're reading some stuff from it. Um, oh yeah, in accumulate thermal sediment, which I don't think we're calling yet. No, see in this comment. No, that's fine, okay. So we are not doing anything with, wow. Where were we? Down here. Yeah, so thermal step zero, we don't do anything with these results. So we don't have to worry about them. And again, we're not applying this stuff, so we can leave this commented out. Now, when the total outflow, um, is greater than the local water volume, this is, wait, wait a second, this is interesting. Total outflow is multiplied by time delta. So the flux is measured per second. In our next stage, we're gonna to have to remember to make, to check to make sure that the flux values that are being used are scaled by time, because otherwise we're gonna, we'll be getting all kinds of weird shit over there. But anyway, our final results are, uh, oh yeah, yeah. So if the total outflow is too large, then we scale it down based on. Um, why do we do this multiplication like this? We can just do multi. Ah, because it's traditional. Okay, right. Uh, we do k factor, which takes in a time delta. What? Time delta. Um, this new flux that we're modifying and water height, which is zero. That's bullshit. What is going on? Okay, let's just look at the calculation of K down here, which is D1 and D was depth. So, and that's D1, which, so D was its initial value D1 is what we calculated here, which is, come on, Chris, work this out, which, which is multiplied by this KR, and KR was rain rate scale factor. Okay, so wherever this is used, that was that. Okay, it was in add rain. Oh, really? That was the add rain function? Of course it is. Okay, so water plus rain was the argument that should have gone into um, k factor here. So that's not good. Oof, that was a slightly different behavior. All right, let's reset that. And... Interesting. Well, the water's behaving differently. Whoa, fuck, that is, that is really screwing something up with the sediment. <laughs> the water is behaving differently though, okay. Not sure if that's a good change, but something's happening. Okay. Right. And then the final values are the terrain height, which hasn't changed yet. Um, and it won't do until we've got thermal erosion in the first stage. Um, the water plus rain, which makes sense. The sediment amount, which hasn't changed yet. No, that's just as we read it. And the new flux, which makes sense. And 
and zero. There are five outputs. What was this one for? Um, ah, why do I always forget this? What was the third value for? Terrain data. Oh, the water velocity map. Interesting. So the, the, I would have assumed the water velocity would have you'd want to maintain that velocity between frames. Interesting. So this could be a bug. <laughs> oh, oh, there's been some chat going on. This is really cool. Right, let's have a look through. Where was I? Hey, another commonless convert. Um, yeah, the SDL bindings are really cool. Worth having a look there and starting that way. Um, maybe I should do some 2D stuff after I finally get this working. Um, Grab a juice. Yep, I'm in. Uh, I'm in Norway. Yeah, it's still. It's been really nice up till just recently, and it's starting to give up on the idea of summer, which is annoying because I wanted to go swimming this weekend. Well, I wanted to go kayaking this weekend, but um, wasn't sure that was going to happen. But at least I get to do some swimming. But we'll see. Mark is in. Hey, we got one of a, a US viewer now. Do we have any other US viewers in? I think you might be the first. Santa Cruz. Nice. Yeah, the Lisp file to executable stuff is. I mean, the main way is save Lisp and die. Um. Well, on SBCL, there's um in the builds the build system ASDF um there's a a build operation there which can spit out a um an executable. Essentially, it's just a big um big, big old RAM dump. You just save the whole image, and you say which function is going to be used as your main function, and then when they run it, that gets called. There's uh some jiggery pokery you've got to do for reloading your um. For rehooking up your, um, what am I thinking of? Again, shared objects. Um, your DLLs and things like this. Your, your dynamic libraries, C dependencies, all that kind of stuff. But it's it's fine. Two D erosion could be simpler. Yeah, it's true. Oh yeah, don't use C Lisp. C Lisp is um, is um, is bad these days. I'm not sure if it was ever a good choice, but it's uh, certainly not today. Use SBCL or CCL. That's really the only two choices that make, especially if you're doing games, those are the ones that make make sense. Um, oh, thanks, Shen. Yeah, UIP, UIOP dump image. Yeah, thoroughly. I, I mean, I would use SB, I, I'm using SBCL on Windows and OS X and on Linux. Um, CCL apparently has slightly better debugger. Um, like their step through debugging stuff is better. I haven't tried that yet. Um, SBCL just compiles really good code, gives you really good um, information when you're optimizing. Uh, just It's just cool. I, I, li I, I really like SBCL. Again, bias is showing, but it's, it's fucking great. But either of them really, like SBCL and CCL, the two main ones that compile to machine code rather than going through some intermediary like like C, uh, which was ECL's thing, which is great, and um, ABCL, which does it through Java. Where am I to find SBCL? On their website. Um, yeah, if you're on um, if you're on Linux, it's pretty, it might be worth building it yourself. If uh, you're on Windows, there's a binary that's fine. I normally do that on Windows. I'm lazy on Windows, but. 
That's because I think developing anything on Windows is just like continually, continuously shooting yourself in the face. Um, right. And I'm doing things on the wrong machine again. Press a button. I'm on Windows, but I use MSS too. Yeah, MSS, MSS is a fucking lifesaver. That's so good. Um, hey, Shimeri, is Portical up to a state that you're happy people like relying on that now? Because last time it was just like, don't touch it. <laughs> it is not time. Um... Okay, so let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. Uh, no, where are we? Da, da, da. We'll get up to that in a minute. Erosion step one, here we are. Okay, normal shit, unpacking loads of stuff. Um, then we are going to unpack more stuff and unpack some more. Okay, and then we've got this bullshit. So we've got Calc Terrain Normal, which I am fairly sure has something wrong in it. Oh yeah, actually I forgot to remove this. I was convinced that that was the problem before the stream. Um, now this just weirds me out though. I need to, I need to think about how this is doing this. So this is the function we stole from Stack Overflow a good few episodes ago. Um, with Vim. This plus Vim. Uh, yeah, Vlime is meant to be... What is it? Vlime? Yeah. I saw someone recommending that the other, the other day. Um, that's meant to be quite good. As long as you're using something that's talking to, like, the slime swank kind of backend. Um, yeah, because the editor integration is just killer. Like, that, it completely changes the experience. Yeah, not Savannah. I thought they're using, um, oh, Bazaar or something like that, isn't it? But right, let's doodle this out. See, fuck that we have. So... We're saying that the train normal is the cross product between two vectors. So if it's two normal vectors, we are calculating this guy. So it's, yeah. VA and VB. So now we need to check. It's just some sanity checking to see if VA and VB seem sensible. Um, and this already looks weird. This looks like it, it was taken from some code for doing direct X because these are height differences, which is the vertical component. So I would expect that to be in the Y position. Right? So this one is going one in the X direction, zero in the Z direction, which makes sense. And then we're incorporating the difference between, oh, let me see if I can get this right. The height on the left of us and the height on the right of us. So this one minus this one. I think that's backwards as well. Like if this is the right point and this is the left point and I use my happy values of five and 10 again, here we're saying right minus left is going to give us the. It's going to give us this. Yeah, that's that's actually correct. So if right's yeah, this is five. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, that's fine. And then we're going top and bottom, which again is the same deal. So I think that is how that should have been. So that looks like this terrain normal was wrong as well. That's fine. Um, I'm not going to put that in the unpack. Not going to give this a proper description right now. Uh, 
Okay, and we've got all these flux, pieces of flux data. And this is what I was worried about was that these might be being used without scaling. So we'll just have to keep an eye out for that. And actually the next place we're going to is calc water delta. And that seems to have a time delta involved. We should be okay. Yes, everything's being multiplied by time delta. That's cool. So here we're taking the liquid that's flowing out of our neighbor cells into us. And we're subtracting the value, the amount of liquid that's flowing out of our cell. And that means that if this bit is higher than this bit, then the result will be positive. So water flowing in is positive. That's this note up here. And then if the water's flowing out, then it's negative. That makes sense. Okay, and that's all multiplied by time delta. That's cool. So this value is scaled by time. We don't have to worry about that. Which means this should also be fine. So calc new water height is just the current water height. Um, adding on the water change, which makes sense. It's going to, if it's positive, we're gaining water, that's fine. And then we're dividing that by the area of the cell. These are both one, so it makes no change. So that's fine. So that it looks correct. And to be honest, if that was wrong, then these pools would be not behaving properly. So it makes sense that that's correct. Um, velocity could be a zero vector. Yes, we looked at that. That was indeed the problem. It was a problem. So velocity 2D and this is taking similar values. So looking at the flux that's going out of one, um, yeah, that's going in and out of our cell and adding things together and working out what the velocity is and then halving it for some reason. And the only reason it's being halved in my code is that in here, there is this. Oh, why is that not? Um... Can I not write on this? Strange business. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, there's this half. So, yeah, that's fine. And then with this, we got into the code we were looking at earlier, which was calculating the 3D velocity from the 2D velocity. I'm not convinced that's broken right now. <laughs> we'll see. Um, not sure if we need to take the water height into account when we're doing that. But we'll see. Actually, that's uh, again, that's offset minus height. So if this is, if I do that same example, it will be five minus 10, which would be minus five, which is correct. That will make this negative. That's what I want. And then new y goes into this, and then we scale that down to the size of the original 2D vector. So we haven't changed the magnitude. Uh, it's not fantastic, but I think it's okay. It's not the main bit of code I'm worried about. And then this is where we're going to start running into issues because um, C was related to calculating how much sediment is going to be picked up at any given point. So that's going to be of interest. And we'll get to that soon.
Cool. Oh man, I really hope we get through this today. I'm actually quite looking forward to yeah getting this working, looking at it going, yay, and then just doing something else. And then coming back to this when we need some terrain and something. Um, so let's look at how C was calculated. So we can calculate C water sediment transport capacity which represents how much sediment can be transported in a cell. That is interesting, but I just remembered something again. I was worried about flux. Yeah, this velocity and thus velocity 3D are not scaled in any particular way. I think that's okay. Hmm. Yep, that should be okay. It's only actually used in here. It's also interesting. Oh well, let's have a look. Stop worrying about it, let's have a thing. So, there is some sediment capacity factor multiplied by some other things. So there's a dot between, where is it here? KC is a global simulation parameter controlling sediment capacity. Bam. Um, sine A is the local tilt angle. Pardon me. Oh wait, this is this is one of these parts of the paper where they explain something and then immediately redefine it. I think, yeah. This is the actual fucking definition of C. Okay, so KC is that factor minus normal dot product with the velocity vector of the three D water flow vector. Yes. Okay, so. Dot product, velocity 3D, and normal. Fine. And again, here the magnitude is not going to matter because... Well, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe it doesn't matter. Um, and then we're multiplying that with... The magnitude of the 2D vector. And then with the L max. What was L max? Oh yeah, this ramp function that is meant to scale the effect of the erosion based on depth of the water, which is this. And I'm not worried about that part right now. I think that is vaguely behaving. Okay, and then, so that's calc C, which was wrong before. And then we have erode sediment, which is a big old funky function here. And this depends on a number of things. So we have a couple of options. Um, <laughs> next week, PDF formula digester. Now, yeah, it feels like I would love that though. The problem is with PDF, you can't even copy paste a fucking thing without it screwing everything up. So, oh, the pain, the pain. Chimera, and once you've come back to it, realize you should have just used World Machine in the first place. Shut up! <laughs> Stop being right! Uh, it is cool. It's fun to see how this stuff is put together, and it really isn't that. Uh, more of the complications seem to be coming out of little things with the paper. Here's one, actually. I would really like your opinion on this, because all, all of you people that are following along code-wise, roughly... Let's uh, jump back to the right machine again, because they talk about in here, where was it? Oh, wait. Oh, no, okay. To do with thermal erosion, and it really confused the crap out of me. So I'm going to jump to a different part. Should I jump to a different part of the code? No, I should finish this fucking function. And then I can jump to a different part of the code. Otherwise, I'm just going to get even more confused than I already am. So local hardness is constant. 
and ST is current sediment that's been passed in um, and we just do some things. Time delta multiplied by hardness multiplied by soil suspension rate and then C which is some number and that we've calculated and ST. Um, which is that sediment. Let's just make sure that's correct. So here's the first version. Time multiplied by terrain hardness. That was big R if I remember. Let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. We slowly lower the R, which is local hardness coefficient. Okay. So yeah, something minus, so that's, oh yeah, this is the new height minus this stuff, which is the, because they're all the, they're all the same for all of these. Time multiplied by local hardness coefficient multiplied by C minus ST. Multiplied by this, um, Soil suspension rate, which is really annoying. Um, yeah. And then all of these are the same and it's just, all it is really is like, take some sediment off the terrain, add that sediment to the total sediment amount, and then the depth of the water um, gets that added to it as well, because the water, the thing is now in suspension in the water, so we need to increase the size of that. So it's, And we have a clamp around there because it said to in the paper. Um, and that's a good point. Why wouldn't we have a clamp around it on the second one? Well, because they said it for 12C and not 13C. To prevent negative water heights in 13C. Oh yeah, because... Um, to prevent... Wait a second. Prevent negative water heights in equation 12C, we've clamped the dissolved amount of water in the cell. Well, 12C is an addition to the water height. So unless this is negative, it's more likely to be an issue here, surely, when we're actually subtracting some values. Not sure about that, so I'm just going to stick the clamp around here for now. Um, oh, I see, the clamp was around... Oh, okay, yeah, the clamp was around this to make sure that this value doesn't get more than water height. Yeah, fair enough. Whatever, that's fine. Still strange. Hmm, I feel weird about this code. Okay. We eroded some sediment, and then we evaporate some water. So the new water height from here. Whoa, that broke fast. Oh, okie dokie. That wasn't okay. Is that the first time we've used? Huh. We still have some issues. Uh, Grubby's just saying, wow, SPCL checks for a lot of little details in my code. Yep, it's good at that. Um, Oh, don't run scripts directly like that. You really want to be doing that from inside your editor. Like, um, yeah, like the, the only time I run Lisp stuff from like the command line is if I'm installing Quick Lisp or if I'm dropped, if I've compiled something to an executable and then I'm running it there. 
it's uh well to be fair i don't use lisp for scripting so there's a lot of people that would disagree with me on that um Einstein erosion. God damn it, you people. Love like syntax. Hey, dude. Um, now I know who you are. Yeah, like, really do look at them. Um, I can't remember what it's called. Ah, let's just have a quick Google and see. Um, what have I got? Bring up a browser. There we go. Blime. Common Lisp dev environment for Vim. See, I haven't heard of Vlime so much. I've heard of Slim. Um, which is the equivalent of Slime for Vim. But um, again, I'm not sure how that compares. Oh no, Slim was the... Sorry, I'm talking shit then. Okay, so what's the Vim one? Maybe it was Vlim. Interesting. Slim V. That was the other one. So I'm not sure what the difference between... Um... Oh, cool. GLS compilers. That's not what I'm meant to be reading about. Anyway, yeah. Slim V or Vlime seem to be interesting in the Vim space, but you really want that editor integration. Otherwise, you know, it's no better than Python. And I, I love Python, but yeah. <laughs> cool, right. Oh, what did we do then? So minus evaporation, it seems probable bullshit that um so maybe we didn't fix things up as well as i thought crap <laughs> so let's just put c down here um god damn it Oh, and of course, now we're going to have to... Oh boy, let's go and set the map flat again so we can force problems. Um... Oh, I thought we had this fixed. At least it's crashing nice and quick. That's <laughs> small mercies. Yeah, so it's... It's getting around to crashing, but it's not crashing as fast as it was. Ah, that's really annoying. Um, so the fact that this isn't crashing it fast means that it's not to do with height differences anymore. Black. Right. Um, how are we going to do this? We're going to have to add our checks back into the code. Oh, they've been there the whole time. Cool. Right. Well, I'm going to lower the resolution of our check because I don't need to get hit. I just need to get hit at some point when there is not a number in there. Um, and... Oh, what a pain. And this doesn't seem to help us get to the point where we start having issues. So... How do we speed this up? Let's get it. Let's let it be noisy again. Oh, that crashes really fast. Okay. Um, that's good. Okay. That should be helpful. Um, so that was saying that C is not a number. Let's just make sure that I'm um, getting something sensible. So let's check for these guys again. Water height. Reset, continue. Man, I can't wait to build a decent debugger for doing, um, for debugging GPU code, because this is just so annoying. 
Um, okay, so that wasn't that was a number, so that's fine. Velocity two D and velocity three D. Velocity two D. is not the problem, but it wasn't last time either, so. Velocity 3D is not the problem, good. Okay, so we've got different, <laughs> different causes of this fucking not a number problem. Well, that's good at least. So, normal. Is it the normal that's the problem? We did change that. No. The normal is not the issue right now. Oh wow, that sediment map looks strange though. Hmm. Interesting. Um so it wasn't that. But when we do put C here. And we rerun it. It crashes nice and fast. God, I'm glad this crashes fast though. Um, it is not a number. So this, all of these arguments are numbers, but calc C results in not a number. So we've got something in here. Um, better check sediment capacity is being correctly um, imported. Because it's a implicit uniform. Yep, it's fine. And sediment capacity is one. That's good. Um, oops. Come on now. The dot products of the negative normal and um, let's just take all this code down here. Where are we? Um, where are we using this? Here we go. Oh dear. So hoping to be done with this today. We'll check that one. This one. Right, so let's do let's temp be this stuff. That's not a, that's, that is a number rather. So that's probably not it. Um, length of velocity 2D. Is not a number. What the fuck? Wait, 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 what? That's strange. Oh. I don't understand. We checked for that though. Didn't we? Oh no, wait a second. If velocity 2D I've been assuming that if you do some math which involves not a number, you should get not a number back. But it looks like that, that's not the case. Um, no, the X component. Ah, the X component of X2D is not a number. Bollocks, that changes a ton of stuff. Um, that's really annoying. How did we get caught out by this? Oh. 
Oh wow, this puts this problem way back in the process. Oof. Okay then. It's saying that this essentially is a uh, is the problem. This is blowing my mind a bit, to be honest. No, that's that is a number. What have I missed? Oof. Pixel Outlaw, where's that not a number coming from? It's not a native CL thing, is it? Um, no, it's from the floating point representation. So SBCL um, does, well, does support not a number. I mean, like the Lisp spec doesn't require you to use um, whatever the IE float specification is. But I believe SBCL does. Um, and that has a not a number concept and the not a number we're getting is in our um is in we're getting an undefined value in glsl that's getting written into a texture and then i'm pulling the texture down and then we're seeing that in sbcl but this is super weird because i'm getting two kind of i'm getting rather mixed messages here It's saying that the let's put temp again. Saying the x of velocity two d is not a number. Then we look at where velocity two d comes from, and there's nothing here that's modifying it. It's from this. We're saying is that this should give us not a number, which it does. So that bit's reliable. And so then we go and look at the implementation, which is this. Let's just dump it here. Let's change this to zero because that's correct to do. That's perfectly valid. We're only interested in X anyway. And we pass in flux and we use the same names for the values we're passing in and the arguments inside the function. So this should be fine. Like we should be able to remove this, put this here, say continue, and we get not a number. Okay, cool, so we're narrowing this down. Then it should be fine to say, take this out, whoops. And then temp is foo, we don't need we don't need to put it in a vector if the only thing we do is take it out of the vector again. And that's still not a number. Good. Right. Okay. So progress. We multiply by 0 0.5. This can't be the reason. He <laughs> did what? Why? I don't like this game. This is a bad game. Oh, unless I really hope um, Asia Mera, you probably remember this. Um, common, oh, sorry, SBCL's floats would um, would not a number be in, in SBCL be the same as in the IE float standard? No, it was because I, I tested some of this stuff the other day. I mean, I think not a number in whatever that um, spec is is a range of values, but 
I'm just trying to work out if we could have got this accidentally, because I don't know how half of this equals not a number. You know, that doesn't make any damn, just doesn't make any fucking sense. Nan should actually trap. Yeah, but I've turned that off. So I... Because I didn't get... like This is years back. I didn't get anywhere in common list for trying to do... Um, but they are the same as IE. Thanks. Oh, that's great. I, I, yeah, the traps I hit... So many issues so fast trying to do anything that I... I just turn them off. And I'll take the... I'll take the numbers. Okay, so that... Fuck. What are we seeing? It's so reliable. Maybe I'm... We could be looking at a compiler bug? I mean, there's an easy way to check. Um, let's do the usual thing. So we do pull G. And the pipeline is erosion 1. Okay, so, lots of code. Foo, oops. Here we are. 0.5 F times this. Flux at L. Yep, that's fine. And it is, like, I mean, it is not a number in, like, it's not just Lisp making a mistake with this. Actually, I'm, I'm really sure, apart from the fact that would be bonkers. But if I take these checks out and say continue, we'll get the diamond of death immediately. So there is something going wrong here. Um, I'm just not working out what it is. I think this is what we'll change this show to. The format of this show now is, if you're ever feeling incompetent about being able to program, watch this, because then you'll just get to see someone struggle with something really basic for a long time. And you'll feel better about this. Ah, come on. What is it? What is this? Super strange. Um... What time are we at, anyway? Yeah, 21.32 already! God damn it! Hmm. So we take foo, and then temp is foo, and then... That's put into that vector. Yeah, are any of these themselves not a number? Possibly. Oh yeah, you're right, because we found out that adding them together doesn't necessarily do it. Good call, that man. Okay, so let's, um, yeah, let's check that. I'll stop farting around this and get into, oh yeah, <laughs> I need to put my checks back in. Um, check and check, and yes, then we've got that problem. And then, foo, here we are. Thanks, Mark. You're keeping me on track, it's good. If, it, if flux at L is like, oh, okay, um, oh, fuck. right. If any of these have problems, it's going to be really interesting. Um, how do I want to do this? I'll just do X for now. We'll, this will be a bit fiddly, but we'll. We'll just manage. Ah. This is actually not what it does. Never mind. Oh, balls to you. 
Oh, good catch. Okay, so there's not a number in flux at L. Oh, that's a... This changes a lot of things. God damn. <laughs> this is... Oh, man. Okay, so this isn't the last week of this. That's something we have learned. Um... That means the flux map has this shit in it. Unbelievable. <laughs> Parrot, I'm not even going to ask you. Um... Okay. So. Well, there's one way to check. There's a lot of ways to check, but this should do the job. We'll go down here. We, instead of pulling this, we will have the pull the water flux map instead. Um. And we will go through it much finer than we have been doing. And... Hmm... Actually... I just realized a problem in this kind of check state thing I've been doing. Because I've been doing it every so many pixels and just happy to get a... Not a number at some point. That means that one frame I could get a not a number in the second stage, then you go back to the first stage, screw up some values there, and then come forward. So, ah, oh, th this, the way I've set up this test pretty much guarantees that I'm gonna get spurious values. Oh, that's annoying. Woof. Single float, quiet, not a number, there we go. In step zero. Let's uh, see where it's seen first in water sediment map. In step one. Who's the culprit? I guess we need to check both on both stages. Um, this is going to make things slow. Okie dokie, um... So what? Interesting. Um, oops. I can't believe this. I'm such a muppet. 
Stage zero, and it's the water flux map. God damn. How? So that's saying that... <laughs> Oof, that's really frustrating. I just realized there is a GL cell phone. I'm out of focus. Oh, good. That's helpful. Let's just stack the problems. Come on. Bring it back in. Bring it back in. Um, da -da -da -da. Let's see what's going on. I'm glad you guys are entertaining yourself while I'm screwing this up. Come on, camera, it's not hard. Just keep bringing it back. No, no, there we go. Um, seems like everyone, everyone seems to implement their own vector library. It's an odd rite of passage. Yeah, actually, the, the, I mean, when I started out with Lisp, I didn't know about Quick Lisp properly. And I didn't know how to find that existing stuff. And I was it was one of those things that implementing vector libraries is a really good way to get a feel for a language. Because there's no... It's a perfectly understood problem. Um, and it's useful. So it's quite a motivating thing to work on. And you get forced to look at a few things. And, it, like, and then when you're like, mm, it'd be nice if it went fast. You know, you look up various parts of the language. For, for CL, it was a great way to get into it. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> love like, love like something. Turn off the Gaussian blur on your cam. Yeah. If I'm not gonna make visual effects, my camera will just do it for me. Yeah. Can't it just make it look like erosion's happening, please? Um. <laughs> Taurus demo camera. Oh, this is why we keep you. Right. Okay. So stuff we screwed up. Real early. There is a GLSL function for checking if something's not a number. Pretty sure. There's a... Here's Nan. That looks handy. Um... Fuck. And it does it per element as well. That's pretty good. I want to change that API so it always returns just a bool, but um, I'll do that another day. But that's that's cool. Right. Um, that's amazing, man. I wonder which bit is screwing up. But we know that there's something wrong with new flux now. Um, What shall we do about that? What should we do? <sighs> Sorry guys, I'm giving a bit of a a bit of a brain fart here. Apply coffee. Think some more. All right. What's the nicest way to view this? Um. Well, maybe we should start making use of this sediment flux stuff. Since we're not doing any real work with it, we could dump some values out here. Um, and we know what coordinates at, so we could dump out whatever value we're interested in. And then on the error, we can just pull that. So let's... Uh, 
Let's do this. More nonsense. Oh, and this means we're going to need two. Oh, man, this is... This is frustrating. Where's our X and Y? Okay. Um, and, yeah. And then we need to go up here and Just a kick in the nuts when this problem turns out to be in a completely different place. I just, uh, why? Why did we lose an hour and a half to that? Okay, so it's done. There we go. That's what we need. Thermal map zero. Except we're using, yeah. That's the value. So we're going to reset and do this, and then hopefully when it crashes, we will get. No information, because I'm an idiot and didn't add it to the... Didn't add this. Right, reset, give it time to crash. There it is, and we've got some values. Okay. So, why were those not zero? That's strange. This is an after stage. Oh no, that's right, because at the moment this is doing this. So let's do one, two, three, four. Do that. Wait for the crash. There it is. One, two, three, four. Fine. We've got some values. Let's start looking at things. New flux is apparently the problem. So let's put it there. And. Wait for a second while it crashes, and then we can see that we've got our NANDs. Hooray! And we're going to go down to state and stick a new line here, because that's already getting annoying. Also, as soon as we know it's breaking in stage zero consistently, now I'm going to just take this one out. Probably not a great idea, but also it's going to mean that we get to the issue twice as fast, which is going to be useful, because we're going to be doing this a lot. Uh, Step zero. Oh. Yep. Right, let's see. Let's see what we got there. Um, okay, we're dumping out new flux and that works, so... What could we check? Well, let's put a foo here and set it to whatever new flux was beforehand um, and the reason I want to do that is it could be that the multiplication with the k factor that is the problem not like this not like this not like this um, when it crashes yes so it looks like the k factor is probably the issue See? <laughs> nope. K factor was one. Hmm. Something a bit fucky. 
聞いたら。Wait, no, this is wrong because. Ah,、oh. <sighs> dear.、Um... Factor and then Did this work should do. Not when I keep writing <laughs> double zero, I must be getting tired at this point. I hope so because I don't want to blame this on pure stupidity. And when it crashes, whoa, negative infinity. That's interesting. That will be helping, that's for sure.、Um, yeah, let's just、um, let's always calculate the k factor, and then we won't have to do this weird setf stuff. Yep, foo's gone now, that makes sense. K. Try it again, negative infinity. Well, we've got a suspect at least.、Um, we have some arguments here as well. Three of them. Three of them? Yeah, three of them. Oh, of course, yeah, new flux is a. We'll have to test these separately. Fine. Be that way. Right, so k factor takes in time delta. <laughs> k stands for chaos. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right,、uh, yep, that was 0.1. That makes sense. It was never going to be the time delta, though. That's okay. New flux. Oh, here we go again. No, we checked that new flux itself. Wasn't the issue. Hey, let's look at water plus rain. Maybe, the, maybe somehow that's the thing. Nope, it's small and it's negative. It is certainly not the cause of all our, cause of all our problems, I don't think. But it's got to be some combination of these. Total outflow. Oh, here we go. Wow, this looks really innocuous. Wait, no. This is when I start doubting myself again. Just screw up. Oh, yeah. Wow, okay.、Uh, let's just do that and continue. Let's forget, let's forget that happened. Okay, so. Come on now, Chris. Right. The old flux was fine. Don't know how I can test this anymore, to be honest. The old flux was fine. K is definitely negative infinity, so that is the problem.、Um, water plus rain. 
not the issue. It's just very small negative now. Oh wait, if it's a really, really small number. And some and it's negative and something's multiplying by it, then that's gonna be a massively negative number. What if that's just way out of range? Um No, wait, no, not multiplying by, dividing by. K factor divided by total outflow. Um, let's check total outflow. Flux and time delta, so. Old flux and time delta. More right. Um, that will be a. That's allowed. There we go. It's whoa. Wait, what? Why is that saying zero? That doesn't look kosher. Total outflow is zero? Yeah, that's quite possible. And then we divide by total outflow. That sucks. Well, that's not good. <laughs> you type water plus rain and then there it was. <laughs> yep, get what I asked for. Huh. Flux will always be positive. Yeah, flux is zero. And that's perfectly valid. You can have you can have zero flux. So zero flux results in total outflow of zero, and then we divide by that. That's sucky. Okay, so let's see about this k-factor business. Because it looks like we've got a mistake there. Okay. Yes, this is one of the areas I corrected the paper, so maybe I screwed this up. Um, oh yeah. There's going to be an issue here somewhere. Okay, so K is... the depth multiplied by the area. Let's get rid of that browser. Depth divided multiplied by the area divided by the sum of all the fluxes times by time. Okay, so th this is going to be... This is our outflow. That's correct. Um, this can totally be zero. So what are we meant to do in that case? Other than ha hack this to have some like, you know, uh, minimum 0 0.01. I mean, what are we meant to do about that? Nasty. And there's another bug in the uh, that, well, I'm, something I'm nearly 100% sure is a bug in the paper as well. Um, yeah, and like I said here, the, the paper says this is meant to be max of one and this. But this is only used, right, so the total outflow should not exceed the amount of water in a given cell. If it does, then F will be scaled down, scaled down with the appropriate K factor. And you're meant to multiply, like it shows here, K multiplied by this stuff, right? So that means that to scale it down, it's got to be in the range of just above zero to one, which means it can't be max 
of one and this, because then it's going to be always scaling it up. So I don't know. And I've, I, I have checked this specific bug in a CUDA implementation of this paper. Um, and they used min as well. Min here. I don't know what they did here, actually. I'm going to have to check that up. But I'll do that offline. Okay, let's put this horrible fudge factor in here as well and, um, and see if this code will actually run for a few seconds now. Boom! <laughs> nope. Don't be silly, Chris. Of course it's not going to run. Um, Still getting negative infinity on that K. How strange. Order height was very small. And it was divided by this number, which will make it, what? Thousand, 10,000 times larger, but not infinitely large. Um, and the K factor has to be, this has to be clamp actually, right? Like, whoa. Yeah, this is so ugly. I don't know. It's crashing slower now, that's all we know. Um, let's take out the check states here. <laughs> Oh, well, isn't this going well? What a day. What a day. Nah, we just... Oh, well. So it's another two hours done and we still haven't done it. So that looks like an episode five. <laughs> Yeah, maybe that CUDA comparison should have been checked further. I, I will have to go. I will have to go back to that. Epsilon for the win. Yeah, man, it's super depressing. Like, it's looking like I'm going to have to not rely on the paper that we've been relying on. You know, like we've been implementing a paper, but clearly there are problems. Oh, see you, Darius. Um, okay, yeah, catch you later, man. Have a good one. Hmm. Yeah. That's a real bummer. Seeing these stupid towers climb up. I really, yeah, really wanted to implement this paper. But we are just running into things left and right which don't quite make sense. And I'm not sure if it's just... I can't just put it down to me being an idiot when this can clearly be flux can can definitely be zero. I mean because flux is clamped up here. So yeah, that's um Yeah, I, I will compare with a CUDA implementation. I mean I don't know that it works, but I've I've seen a CUDA implementation online and they have screenshots, so I assume it worked well enough for them to get a screenshot or two. Um Oh Hmm Well, that was a little depressing, but you know, this shit happens. So I will uh I think I'll call it an evening.
I mean, I could keep going. There's no reason not to, but I think I think it's probably best I just sit down, have a coffee, and then come back to this when I'm back in focus. Uh, so yeah, thanks so much for coming down. Uh, sorry that we didn't get this finished today, and I guess we will give finishing it another go next week. Peace, folks. I'll uh, yeah, ping me offline if you need anything or want to know anything. Ciao.